is time. It is time to brew your best beer. The 2016 SJ Pour Challenge is dedicated to your friend and ours, Paul Wickstein. Brought to you by Brewcraft USA. I make Gladfield Malting, Yakima Valley Hops, The Grain Bill, Brewers Exchange, Cake Kingdom Homebrew Supply, Hiraki Homebrew, and a special thanks to our silver sponsors. Hey there, it's time for another SJ Pour Challenge Beer Review. This is for the 2016 SJ Pour Challenge, and this is my third review. Tonight, I've got the Back to Back Black Pale Ale. This is 83P, 82R, 88D. Back to Back Black Pale Ale is a dark twist on the classic American Pale Ale using late mash addition technique to extract color. This black pale ale looks like a robust dark ale, but drinks like a sessionable pale. So go ahead and have one back to back. What else do I know about it? It's 3.9 ABV, 54 IBUs. The OG is 1046, the final is 1.016, and it was bottled on September 5th. Sweet label. Let's go ahead and get this thing cracked and in a glass, what do you say? Nice little hiss. I think this was keg conditioned and then bottled off the keg. The uh, description is a little bit cut off on the website, but got the same trusty surly glass here. Oh, look at that. Good carbonation. Poured a pretty mean head. I can smell it from back here. Might have poured that a little aggressively. But, yeah, that thing is pretty dang dark. Does not look real clear. Looks like there's some haze to it, but I'd say it's a little bit more on the uh, very dark brown than black, but it is very dark. Darker than, say, uh, an arrogant bastard. So, let's see if I can get a, a nose through that head. Oh, very nice aroma. I'm getting... Getting notes of citrus. And some dark, dark fruit. Not much is coming through that, that head. Uh, the bubbles are streaming up on the side of the glass. I don't know if I can get that in the lens there. Not so much. It's a little cold just out of the fridge. But yeah, nice carbonation. The head does not look like it's going anywhere. Nice pillowy, pillowy top there. Let's see if I can get some more aroma. Kind of tough to get it out of the glass, but. Hmm. Nice fruity aroma. Um, picking up notes of what reminds me of Amarillo. Kind of like that Citra Amarillo combo, which I'm a big fan of. So, yeah, so I don't know what the hops are, I don't know what the yeast is, but. It sounds great. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a drink of this and then cut for a little bit of a break. Cheers.
definitely getting the uh, what is it 60 almost 60 IBUs 54 IBUs definitely picking up on that does have a pretty uh, pretty firm bitterness to it I'll go ahead and pour some more in here uh, Picking up a little bit of a an astringency, astringency from it. Uh, I think that might be might be from the uh, malts, but it actually is uh, it's pretty bitter, so it could just be the hops. But I think it, I think it also is some of the grains coming in. Picking up a little bit of a, a yeasty aroma too. The yeast does come off as uh, pretty neutral. Not really kicking any of those English esters or any other type of uh, a yeast ester, uh, but it is. It's pretty. It's a pretty clean yeast character. So it does. It comes off as uh, probably like a, a West Coast ale, Chico. Definitely getting some of the yeast, yeasty uh, aromas. Mm. Mm. Carbonation's there. Yeah, the high carbonation is really, uh, really kind of kicking that up a little bit. Um, I think it might have a little bit of a carbonic bite to it. Could be a little something in the water profile causing that too. Real light in the body, a lot lighter than I thought it would be by looking at the color. All in all, it's drinking pretty good cold. Um, I'm going to cut and take some time, take some score down, take some information down, make some notes. I'll be back to you before you know it. Cheers. Okay, so I'm back. Don't have a whole lot left of it. Um, let it warm up quite a bit to see if I could pull uh, some more aromas and characters out of it. Um, the beer just comes across as being uh, a little bit too aggressive for me. It's uh, it's got a bitterness that kind of comes in and then doesn't really leave even after you, you're you done taking the drink. It kind of sticks around in the mouth. But uh, I think that uh, with a few little tweaks, this beer could be fantastic. You know, reduce the bittering addition or move it to a later point in the boil, maybe at 30 minutes or even 20 minutes. And um, maybe change the hops up for the late, late kettle additions. Bring some more of the juicy hops in because it, uh, the characters that I'm getting out of it, initially I was thinking Amarillo, Citra, something like that, but as I drank it more, it almost just comes across as a, uh, as like a Columbus or something that's got a lot of alpha acid that's, uh, you know, creating a lot of, uh, of, of bitter characters. And like I said, that just kind of sticks around. So, um, the other thing is I'm not getting any of the, the malts, really. Um, I was hoping those the the dark grains would uh, kind of shine through. Um, you know, maybe that astringency is coming from that. Maybe it's in your sparge. Uh, there's kind of like a, a chalkiness that's sticking with it. Um, kind of like a dry, chalky finish. Uh, I would think you'd have more a little more sweetness with that 1016 final. But all in all, I think. I think you're really close to having a great beer here, great session beer. Um, session beers are difficult. Uh, 
takes a lot to balance that out. You don't really have much for the hops to stand on, so not much of a foundation. But anyway, cheers for your entry. Uh, I'm still drinking it, so it tells you something. Anyway, uh, best of luck to you in the challenge, and we'll see everyone on the next one. Cheers.